As marine workers tow the last piece of sinuous pipe into place, nearly a year has passed since work began on the lake. It's spring of 2010. 13,000 feet of our pipeline is in place, 500 ground anchors, 400 pile, pile sport caps, uh, all the manholes, and done all the dirty deeds. Now it's just checking our, our numbers, making sure our grade's right. We're on a final punch list. Dive teams recheck each connection and recalculate critical elevations on the interceptor's almost imperceptible slope of seven feet over two miles. Among the last items on Mike's list is testing caissons, portable tubes that access the pipe through its 10 submerged manholes. So this is basically like a submarine escape hatch that drops in. Once the caisson is docked and pumped completely dry of water, it allows crews and equipment to descend below the lake surface and open a hatch into the pipe for maintenance and inspection. It's dry, we got a good seal. Even in darkness, it's clear that the caisson functions perfectly, no leaks. Then when you get to this point in the end of the job and you're doing your final survey and everything's coming together, it's, it's a pretty good feeling. We've reached a milestone now. We're uh, halfway through the project and uh, about a year from today, um, we'll be done. I'm very pleased with how things have turned out. We're ahead of schedule and under budget. I wish I had the luxury to take a step back and just reflect, but I have to look forward. I have to look to the next phase and the challenges that that presents. The remainder of the project will occur in a mostly dewatered lake. The reason that we can't construct this project uh, in the water is because we have to connect to existing live sewers and it's critical that those be done in, in a safe condition so there's no risk of spill. Mark Wisensee leads the contractor team for the lake down portion of the project. His first job, managing removal of water. The drawdown will begin in September. It will take two to four weeks to drain two billion gallons. In order for crews to complete their tasks on the lake bed, water levels must be lowered by 24 feet the lake's volume will be reduced by 70%. The entire west end will go completely dry, including the swim park and canals. And the interceptor will be plainly visible, bisecting the lake east to west. Boating will not be possible. Along the perimeter, a wide and sometimes steep wedge of the shore will be exposed for eight to nine months. On the east side, Lakewood Bay will drain completely, and the southeast arm will narrow by more than half. With the lake down, Mark's crew will begin connecting to the interceptor at 15 locations, all while ensuring flows can continue uninterrupted and spill free. All right, so this is our CD150 pump. It's a six inch pump. It to review plans for this process, Mark comes to Godwin Pumps in Woodburn, Oregon. They're responsible for all the systems that will convey sewage around our work areas during the project. The last thing we want is a spill on this project and so we've taken every precaution to ensure that uh, that won't happen. Here is the existing pipeline and the dotted line here is the proposed new pipeline. In order for us to make a tie-in to the existing system with our new piping, we'll need to bypass or pump around the existing sewage that's flowing through this pipe around our work area using temporary pump station and temporary piping. It's complex and it's like doing open heart surgery. Every detail matters more because of significant time pressure. In a perfect world, we'd have a year in the lake. Under this, the constraints of this project, we have about six months and we need to accomplish a lot of work in that time. When we started looking at this project several years ago, we were thinking about a summer drawdown and quickly heard from a lot of residents uh, and the Lake Corporation that that was just not going to be something that was acceptable. Working only during the off season between September and May necessitates careful logistics and precision pacing. But there's a big dividend. This summer will be reasonably normal. The contractors have a very difficult time because the project has been compressed in half. Okay, here we go. I'm Bob Barman. I live on Lake Oswego. I don't think, unless you're out here and you see it, that you realize how hard these people are working to get their job done in a quick time frame to allow us to keep the lifestyle. 
because summertime is sacred. No dunking, please. Summertime, it's like vacation from morning till night. To take the lake lifestyle away would really impact not just the 700 people who live directly on the lake, but everyone else in the city that gets to use the lake. The lake is a defining icon of this city. I rest very easy knowing that we're darn lucky to have the team that's put this together. Coming in a little hot there. Coming up, connecting the system.